Hey everyone, so this is going to be a really short video. Um, just something I noticed in my last quarter of graduate school, I had the opportunity to help teach an intro machine learning course, and a question that came up for a lot of students whenever we learned a new machine learning algorithm was, should I scale my data and bring it to the same standard deviation for every single variable? Should I do that transformation before applying the algorithm? And it was interesting to me because in some cases this really matters. You absolutely have to do this or else you're going to get bad results. In some cases it doesn't matter at all. And in other cases it won't affect your predictability. You'll get the same predicted results, but it's going to affect your interpretability, which means how you interpret the coefficients or the various factors that are in your model. So I want to do this really brief video just looking at all three cases. So let's just dive right into it. It'll be real short. So the first is where you have no effect on your machine learning algorithm, whether you choose to scale or do not scale your data. And I think the best example of this is decision trees and all the variants that come after. So random forests and bagging and boosting and extra trees, all this stuff. So everything that's descending from decision trees. To see this, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you think about how a decision tree works, let's say you have some variable that's measured in meters. And let's say that ranges between zero and one meters. Decision trees are going to say, where is the best split of this variable? So that if I were to split it there, let's say the best split was at 0 0.8 meters, it would choose that as the best because on the left of that split, there's a big majority of one class that you're trying to predict. And on the other side of that split would be a big majority of the other class. So it achieves a good separation between these two classes and therefore it picks 0 0.8 as your split. Now let's say that your data was on a different unit system. So let's say it was measured in centimeters instead. So now your range is not zero to one, but zero to 100 because there's 100 centimeters per meter. Now it does not affect the decision tree at all because it's going to go along and find the same relative split at 80. So before it was 0.8 because it was max of one. Now it's 80 because it's a max of 100. It's not going to care the scale of your units. It's just going to look at the place where to split so that there's a good separation between the two classes. So here's an example which is not affected by the scaling of your data. Here's an example of the opposite case where it is very, very much affected by the scaling of your data. And this is k-nearest neighbors. So let's say we have this small picture. Maybe it's a little bit crowded. Should I put a little bit more space? But I'll try to point to everything. We have three data points, x, x, and another x here. And let's say that both axes, both variables, are currently measured in meters. And let's say the first data point is at 1, 1, the next one is at 1, 2, and the last is at 2, 2. So these data points are all relatively close to each other. They're kind of neighbors with each other, and there's a distance of 1 between these two guys and 1 between these two guys. So in the sense of k nearest neighbors, these two guys are just as close to each other as these two guys. And that makes a lot of sense. They're both 1 meter of distance apart for either variable. Now let's say that we instead measured one of the variables, let's say the x variable, in centimeters. So the y variable hasn't changed. The y locations are still at 1 and at 2. But the x variables have all gotten multiplied by 100. Again, 100 centimeters per meter. So now we're at 100 centimeters for these two, and we're at 200 centimeters for this one. And now if we blindly just apply the Euclidean distance in k nearest neighbors, we're going to find these two guys are still a distance of 1 apart. But these two guys are now a distance of 100 apart. So we would say that, oh, these are much closer together than these two top ones up here. And that's just not the case because we're measuring on different variables. So this is definitely a case where you do want to scale your data because if you scale this data, then it's going to bring everything in the same relative area so you can measure who's neighbors with who a lot better. And finally, let's look at a case where it's not going to affect the correctness of your results. You'll get the same predicted values no matter if you choose to scale or don't scale your data, but it's going to severely impact your interpretability, which means that when you go in and look at these coefficients, by the way, the method is ordinary least squares, probably the first method you ever learned. If you don't scale your data, it's going to affect how you interpret your results. So again, very simple example. We just have two variables, x1 and x2. Let's say first, again, they're both measured in meters. We find our beta 1 and beta 2. So they're hat because they're just estimates of beta 1 and beta 2. And when it comes to interpreting our coefficients, we can just interpret them as they are. For example, if the coefficient beta 1 is a lot bigger in absolute, value than beta 2, we would say that x1 has a much bigger impact on the response variable than beta 2 does. And we're safe to say that because x1 and x2 are measured on the same scale, so we can just compare their betas just one for one. Now the issue arises if one of our variables is on a different scale. For example, if x2 is now in centimeters, 
let's logically think through what that does to beta 2 now. So before we were saying that a 1 meter increase in x2 is going to increase the response variable y by beta 2. That's just the interpretation of ordinary least squares coefficients. Now just because we have chosen to represent this in centimeters instead, that story still stays the same. So we're saying that still a 1 meter increase in x2 is going to need to lead to the same beta 2 increase in our response variable. But what does that mean for the new beta 2? That means that because we have 100 centimeters per meter, now increasing this quantity by 1 meter is the same as increasing it by 100 centimeters, which is what it's now measured in. So that means that the beta 2 we get now, the new beta 2, needs to be 100 times smaller in order to account for that. If that's still not clear, then think about it this way. If I increase this guy by 100, then I'm going to increase the response variable by 100 times the new beta 2, but that 100 times the new beta 2 needs to be equal to the old beta 2, which was up here. That logically means that the new beta 2 is 100 times smaller than the old one. Okay, so this is just playing around with the scaling because we decided to scale one of our variables. And what does this mean for interpretability? If we weren't aware of the fact that our variables were on different scales, then we would think that beta 1 is naturally just more important than beta 2 because we are downscaling beta 2 by 100, which would make it much less likely for it to be, in absolute terms, bigger than beta 1. So this is where it affects your interpretability, but not necessarily your predictability. This is where it affects both, so this is just not going to work unless you have your data on the same scale. And this is where it doesn't matter if you choose to scale or not scale your data. And if I had to put kind of a unifying bow tie or theme on this video, I would say that if your machine learning method involves distances, for example, k-nearest neighbors or support vector machines or k-means or anything that involves distances between things, then you should scale your data definitely because those distances are going to be skewed if all your variables are measured on some different unit. If your data does not involve distances, such as decision trees, uh, ordinarily squares, things like that, then you could probably get away with not scaling your data, but you can still get these unintended consequences, such as interpreting your coefficients. So if I were to give one piece of advice, I would say it generally doesn't hurt to scale your data. I can think of a couple of exceptions to that rule, but in general, I would first look at, is my data on the same scale? And if it is for sure, then you don't need to worry, that's fine. If it for sure is not, then I would go ahead and scale your data before applying any of your machine learning algorithms so that you don't get into issues of predictive power or interpretability. Okay, so hopefully that cleared that up for, for you all. Um, and if you liked this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next time.